Welcome to the R video tutorial on turning wide files into long files. In this video tutorial, we will learn how to change the structure of the file so it can be analyzed easier in R. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. But anybody can use it. All right, let's get started. So we have a wide to long. So first thing we need to do is read in our file. Uh, this will allow us to see what we have as a wide file and we can better understand it. Uh, the data is cycler data. And I'm going to do name it cycler. Uh, use the assignment operator, read.csv. I'm going to use the path approach. And it's on my desktop. And it's called cycler CPK. You can download this data. Uh, off of the drive that I have linked in the description below. So you should be able to get any of these files that you need. This does have a header in it. So I'm put header equals true. Let's read this in and see what it looks like. So cycler, we hit run and notice it shows up in our environment. We'll click on it in the environment, and we can see that subject, age, gender, treatment, CPK1, CPK2, CPK3, and CPK4. Now, this is what's considered a wide file in the sense that the subject defines the rows, and all measurements on the subject are on the same row in different columns, uh, versus a long file, which would be where the measurement defines the row. So you would have redundant information. Uh, and what we're going to try to do is take this and turn it into a long file because R likes long files better uh, for many of the analyses. It just makes it easier to do. So uh, what we're going to try to do is create a file that has subject, age, gender, treatment, and then the CPK measurement and also the time measurement. So let's give this a go. So the first thing I need to do is just grab the first five columns, then grab the first four columns, and then the sixth column, and so on until I've got the, each of the data sets separated where CPK is its own column. All right, so let's give this a go. So uh, subset for time one. So I'm just going to make my new data set. I'm just going to call it CPK1 for its time one. I'm going to take the cycler data. And I'm going to subset it. I want all the rows, but I want columns 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this will give me the first five columns of the data. And when I run this, I can look at it and see what it looks like. And sure enough, it's the same data set, except that the other three columns are not there. So we can use our copy and paste, because we love copy and paste. And we're going to do this multiple times for each of the other ones. So each of the other columns that we're interested in, we're going to set this up. So we'll do this for two, three, and four. Um, in time two, the last column that we want is six. For time three, it's seven. And for time four, it's eight. Uh, and when I run these, this will grab the correct columns for me. So all of them should be over here now. Yeah. Where do they go? There's CPK1. Oh, I named them all CPK1. So don't forget to change this along the way because these are simple mistakes that you can make when you copy and paste if you don't change everything. So now if I run this, I get CPK1, 2, 3, and 4 over here. And notice this has CPK3. This has CPK2, this has CPK1. Now this actually poses a problem in the sense that when we try to do R bind, we won't be able to stack them because it wants them to have the same column names. So that's what we need to do is change the column names on these now. So let's try that. We're gonna change the column names for CPK. Uh, we're going to use the names function, which we've done in a previous video. So for the names, there's going to be five names, and we want the fifth one. And we want to change it just to CPK. And then we want to do this repeatedly uh, for each and every one of these, all of our data sets. Now, the column name doesn't, or the column number doesn't change here. 
So five is still, there's only five columns in each of these data sets. So the five stays the same even though we changed it above. So when I run this, it should change the name on all of my data sets. So notice now it's CPK instead of CPK4. It's CPK instead of CPK3 and so on. So if I wanted to, I could simply stack them on top of each other. And I'll call it CPK stack. And I could just R bind these together. And let's see, CPK1, CPK2, CPK3, and CPK4. Run this. And I get CPK stack. And notice that I have, again, just five columns again. Last one, CPK. And it has 160 entries, which is four times the ones that had 40 in it. And I can scroll down through and look at all of these. We've got to wait for it to catch up. Um, but they're all there. Okay. Uh, except that we lost information here. So if we go back and look at our original data set, CPK1 meant the first measurement. CPK2 means the second measurement. CPK3 means the third measurement. And CPK4 means the fourth measurement. So there's actually information in the column heading. However, when I do the CPK stack, uh, if I just roll in here in the middle somewhere, I don't know which one this was actually on. I don't know whether it was the first measurement or the last measurement or the third measurement. So what I need to do is add another column that corresponds to the measurement that I'm interested in. And this will use the C bind idea. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the number of rows that I have here. So I'm just going to call this N1. This is the number of rows in our data set, CPK, uh, or the cycler data set. And if I run this, this should give me a specific number. I can highlight the number and run it and make sure that that number is 40, and it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new data set, CPK1A, and it's going to be equal to, I'm going to C bind CPK1 with another vector, which is going to be a repeat of 1, and I'm going to repeat it n1 times. So this will allow me to repeat a number n1 times. If you want to, you can run this itself, and you will see that you get a vector of 1s, and there's 40 of them. So it's the same size as what I want. So when I create, run this all together, um, I'm going to... Uh, let's see here. Let's give this a name as well. So let's say trial. So when I run this, I will get a CPK1A. And then I have subject, age, gender, treatment, CPK. And now we have trial attached to it. So that when I stack them on top of each other, this trial information stays along. So I'm going to do this consistently with my other data sets here. And then I'll stack those on top of each other. And you have to remember that uh, the trial is going to change. So this is 2, 3, and 4. This is going to be 2, 3, and 4. And again, 2, 3, and 4. And this should create my data sets that all have the information that I need on it. So uh, I can run these, and then I can replace these with A. A, A, and A, run it all, and my new CPK stack should have all the information that I need, and it does. It has subject, age, gender, treatment, CPK measurement, and the trial, and if I scroll down through here, I can clearly see which trial was pulled. So number 91 was from the third trial for subject 11, who's 20 years old, who's male, got the medium uh, level treatment, and his CPK was 421. All right, so we successful. We successfully turned a file that was a wide file into a long file. And this becomes really handy 
when dealing with different data sets and, and data structures and different analyses in R. But notice that on each row there is exactly one measurement compared to our original data set where on each row there were multiple measurements. There were four measurements on each row. So that's the difference between a wide file and a long file. Wide file has multiple measurements on a row. A long file has one measurement per row. All right. We can move on to our next video.